49.2 volts. 100%, so that's a true 48 volt battery versus a 52 volt. Okay. Hey folks, welcome back to the old Jarhead, where today I'm gonna make every portable power station manufacturer in the world upset with me, and I probably won't get any more free power stations for me to review and test in the future. Maybe I will, but honestly, if they watch this video, they might decide not to let me test their stuff, and I may have to do it incognito. <laughs> because what I'm gonna tell you is gonna save you some money, and allow you to expand your portable power stations better with far more power than all of the other ones out there that you see on YouTube. In fact, I searched and I searched and I'm good at searching and I couldn't find anybody else doing this. So if you watched one of my last videos, I took an Opus Mega One and the expansion battery cable for that and I cut it apart and I investigated it and I figured out how it all worked. And then I re-terminated that cable with simple ring terminals, connected it to somebody else's battery, in fact, a Lee Time golf cart battery, and I plugged it in and it worked. And since then, I've heard from some of my viewers that they've also now done that and it also worked. So I wanted to talk about that for a minute and explain to you what you can do and how to test and figure out if it will work with your unit. So if you have an EcoFlow, a Blue Eddy, an Anchor Solix or whatever, and I've had several people ask me if those systems can do it too, well, here's how you can find out. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to have a power station that is designed to take one of their proprietary expansion batteries or multiples of them. That's the first thing you need. So what you need to do is you need to take a simple multimeter, or some call these voltmeters, set it on the voltage setting. In the, in the case of this one, which is a Klein, it does both DC and AC voltage, and you just push the function button to change it to DC voltage, and then you take your leads and connect them to the port on your portable power station, the expansion port, not the solar port but the expansion port. And of course this won't work if you don't have an expansion port, then you are restricted to using the solar input and that's a different story, a different way of doing things. But if you've got one like the Opus Mega 1, Mega 2, Mega 3 models, the um, Blue Eddies, the EcoFlows, the uh, Anchor Solixes, heck the All Powers, there's a whole bunch of them out there, Pecron, that have these expandable battery ports. And they tell you, this power station can go to five kilowatts or seven kilowatts or whatever using our expansion batteries. And then people buy those and they're expensive. But if you were to take your multimeter and check that port with the power station off, you should get zero voltage or you might get a few millivolts, but you're not going to get any voltage. Turn your power station on and check again. You're going to learn two things. One, you'll have voltage there. And two, what the voltage is of the battery of the power station that you're working with. Most of these expandable battery type power stations are 48 volt systems. And you're gonna see something between, oh, say 49 volts and 54 volts. Usually 40, like the all, the all powers I just tested was 49.2. So it's a true 48 volt battery versus the Opus Mega One, which is at 53.7. I think seven. That's a 51.2 volt battery. It's just, fully charged. Once you know that, then you can parallel a battery to it because all that port is, folks, is a parallel port. That means that it has a positive and a negative that are connected directly to the positive and negative of the battery on board the power station. It's a direct connection. That's designed so that when you put their expansion battery in using their cable, that you parallel both the negatives and the positives together. And that expands the total capacity of the power station. Once you know that and you know the correct voltage of your power station, you can then take anybody's battery, it does not have to be that manufacturer's battery, and you can connect that battery to your power station to increase the amount of reserve power that it starts out with. Now, a couple things that are important to understand. One, you should try to get within about a half a volt of the onboard battery. 
So for example, my Opus Mega 1 was at 53.7 volts. I need to be with, within half a volt of that. So 53.2 to 54.2, I guess it is. <laughs> math, you know, do some math, Eric. But that's it. As long as you're within that range, as close as you can get, the better. Now, if you have a 48 volt system that's only showing you 49 volts under, after fully charging it up, then you wanna make sure you're using a 48 volt battery, not a 51.2 volt battery. It's important to get your voltages right there close together. Once you have a battery that will work with that power station, all you've got to do is cut the end off that cable. Now, before you cut the end off, what I recommend is you plug in their expansion battery cable, turn the unit on, and check voltage at the end of the cable. Make absolute certain you know which is your positive and your negative side. When you cut the end off, you're going to have a bunch of wires you ignore the small wires. The small wires are just for communications. Those expandable battery packs have battery monitors on them and they can communicate with the battery monitor that's in the main power station. But you don't really need that. Now, I think a battery monitor is good and with the lead time that I used, I had lead times battery monitor that I could connect to it so I could see what my, my voltage and state of charge and all that was. And those are really easy to get and hook up. So that's not really a big deal. So you don't really need their communications. All you really need is the big wires. And on the Opus Mega One, those were eight gauge wires. And I only used a pair of them, but I've been talking to some that have done this since I made that video. And they do find they're getting a little better results by using all four in the case of the Opus. So you take your two negatives and you bond those together in a ring terminal and your two positives and you bond those together in a ring terminal and that's just gonna give you essentially a bigger cable. And the reason you might wanna do that is because the onboard battery is going to be closer to the inverter than your external battery. So it's going to have a tendency to wanna to draw more off the internal battery than the external, and you'll see that over time. I added five kilowatts to my Opus Mega One, which took it over six kilowatts. They said, oh, it's good for five kilowatts. Yeah, no. I now know that I could put an extra 10 kilowatts on it if I wanted. And why would you do this? Well, <laughs> if you've got a 2000 watt inverter and a thousand watt hour battery, that's really, really limited. But by adding another five or more kilowatts of power, Man, you can run a lot of things with that, survive some outages. So to recap, test everything first. Make sure you know which is your positive, which is your negative. Make sure you know the exact voltage of the battery on the power station when it's fully charged and match that voltage with the battery you're gonna add to it. And you can actually buy 48 volt batteries and 51.2 volt batteries. Now, while 48 volts is the nominal voltage, I have noticed that a lot of the golf cart type batteries or even server rack batteries can come in 48 volts or 51.2. So pay attention to that when you're buying batteries. If you have a 25.6 volt battery on your power station, then you just need a 25.6 volt LiPo 4. Once you connect those together, they'll be connected in parallel. And what that means is that anything that's drawing power off of that power station will draw off of both at the same time. Both of them charge up, so the external five kilowatt battery charged up as well as the onboard Opus Mega One battery. That means that whether you're using the solar input or the 120 volt AC input, or if you're across the pond, 220 or 240 volt input, it will charge them both up. It will work as if it is an integral unit to that power station. And trust me folks, this is an amazing thing. All you gotta do is get a voltmeter, check everything out, make sure everything's dialed in just right before you connect it all together. And then there's a couple things I'd like to say that you should do when you're doing this. Number one, you should fuse that external battery that you're connecting to it to the power station. What size fusing you do should be based on the cable size. I know in the past I've talked about expected amp draw, but one point that was made to me is that if you've got a cable that's only capable of 45 amps, you shouldn't put a 100 amp fuse in, and that's true, you really shouldn't. I like to put in an on off switch if it does not have one. Golf cart batteries generally do, and I think server rack batteries also. 
but a lot of batteries don't. If you just buy a 48 volt battery or a 51.2 volt battery that has no on off switch, I recommend putting in an on off switch. I can drop a link down below to the one I use. That way, what you can do is have both units completely off. The battery's turned off, the power station's turned off. You then connect them together in that off state. Then you turn on the battery, then you turn on the power station. What will happen is when you turn on the battery, there's no connection between the two units, but it's sitting there ready to connect. Then when you turn on the power station, it will sense that voltage coming from that battery. It will figure out that it's there and all it will be well in the world. It'll make that parallel connection. Life is good. It's an amazing little trick that you can do and manufacturers probably don't like this because for the price of one two kilowatt expansion battery, you can probably get four or five kilowatts of life before batteries that are different. So you could save yourself quite a bit of money and give yourself an amazing amount of flexibility. But in short, folks, if you do that, you can greatly expand the capacity of your power station without spending big money to buy their expansion batteries. You just need their cable because you need the type of connector that connects to the power station. It's a simple trick and you can get a lot more power. I hope that helps somebody out. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you all have a great day. The old jar hit out.